Today, we are going to take a look at a BodyViz Brain Builder about hair and alopecia. Throughout all of our lives, all of us lose hair. The average person loses somewhere between 50 and 100 hairs each day. Most of the time, our hair loss isn't noticeable or a cause for concern. However, the loss of a considerable amount of hair is oftentimes the sign of an underlying medical condition. In this brain builder, we will discuss the integumentary system and its relation to hair anatomy. We will follow up our lesson on skin and hair anatomy with a case study on alopecia. The integumentary system, or the integument, is made up of skin and its derivatives. The functions of the integument are protection, synthesis and storage of lipids, excretion of wastes, regulating body temperature, synthesis of vitamin D3, sensing environmental stimuli, coordination of immune responses such as those of skin cancers and other pathogens of the skin. The human body typically has around 5 million hairs, 98% of which are distributed across the surface of the body. The two types of hair are vellus hairs, which are shorter and thinner, and are often referred to as peach fuzz, and terminal hairs, which are longer and thicker. Terminal hairs include those on the chest, pubic area, face, eyelashes, eyebrows, and head. During puberty, vellus hairs in certain areas are replaced by terminal hairs under the influence of male hormones. Each hair consists of a visible shaft and an embedded root extending into the skin's dermis. The root is surrounded by a follicle, a living structure composed of epidermal and dermal portions. The hair bulb, the root's deepest portion, expands and the hair papilla supplies blood to the hair. New hair cells continuously form from the stem cells in the hair bulb, pushing older cells out superficially where they die due to lack of nourishment. The hair growth cycle comprises three phases, anagen, the growth phase. In this phase, cells are actively dividing, which causes continuous hair growth. Hair remains in this phase for approximately two to seven years. Catagen, the transitional phase. In this phase, the follicle begins to detach from the dermal papilla. This causes the follicle to shrink and stop growing. And telogen, the resting phase. During the resting phase, the follicle completely detaches from the papilla, causing it to become dormant. Eventually, the hair will shed, leaving room for new hair to grow. Hair shape, whether it is straight or curly, is determined by the follicle shape, while hair color is influenced by melanin types. Pheomelanin produces lighter colors of hair, while eumelanin produces darker colors of hair. Structures associated with hair follicles include the erector pili muscles, which allow the hair to stand on end when stimulated by the sympathetic nervous system. Sebaceous glands release sebum into the hair follicle, lubricating the skin, acting as a bactericide, and keeping the hair soft. Contraction of erector pili muscles and sympathetic nervous system stimulation triggers sebum release into the hair follicle. Alopecia, or hair loss, can affect various parts of the body, including the scalp. It can be temporary or permanent, and it comes in many different forms, such as Hereditary, or age-related alopecia. This appears as an individual ages and is the most common form of alopecia. Male pattern baldness is a well-known example. Autoimmune forms of alopecia. Alopecia areata causes patchy hair loss, often on the scalp, eyebrows, or eyelashes. Alopecia totalis, complete hair loss on the scalp. Alopecia universalis, hair loss on the entire body. Alopecia barbe, circular facial hair loss. Inflammatory alopecia, cicatricial alopecia, develops after skin damage such as a burn or a severe skin infection. Postpartum alopecia, Shedding of excess pregnancy hair occurs after childbirth due to a drop in estrogen levels. Hair growth typically resumes within months. Alopecia with unknown causes. Centric centrifugal cicatricial alopecia, or CCCA. This type is predominantly seen in women of color. Hair loss starts at the crown and progresses backward over the scalp. Alopecia diagnosis involves a thorough assessment including medical history, physical examination, 
and possibly tests such as a scalp biopsy or blood tests to rule out underlying conditions. Pull tests and dermoscopy may also be used to evaluate hair loss patterns. Seeking professional evaluation from a dermatologist is key for an accurate diagnosis and an effective treatment management. Treatment options offer short or long-term relief and include corticosteroids, minoxidil, stress reduction, immunotherapy, and platelet-rich plasma injections. Unfortunately, no permanent cure exists for alopecia. Finally, let's take a look at a patient example. You receive your patient's file and take a look. Age, 35, sex, male. Chief complaints, patchy hair loss on scalp and body. You invite the patient into your office for an examination. Your patient presents with rapid onset patchy hair loss across his scalp and body. You perform a physical examination and reveal distinct patches of hair loss without inflammation or scaling, which raises your suspicion of alopecia areata. A scalp biopsy confirms the diagnosis, revealing characteristic miniaturized hairs and no scarring. You prescribe topical corticosteroids and minoxidil solutions for daily application. You provide detailed instructions on application techniques, as well as information on potential side effects. You inform your patient that regular follow-up appointments are important and will allow you to monitor progress and adjust the treatment plan as necessary. That was a classic example of alopecia. Thank you for watching this Brain Builder video. Please like and subscribe to our BodyViz channel, or if you are new at BodyViz, check out our other anatomy resources and schedule a demo at bodyviz.com.